When I when I've repeated the Lord's prayer many times in the past, you know, we always say, "Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven." We kind of separate it as a two phrase thing. Actually, it's really not. It's a one phrase. If you were if you were reading this in the in the Hebrew, much less than the Arabic as, as it was written in, but if you're reading it in the Hebrew, and I it it reads as as a unified phrase. In other words, one is is so integrated into the other. It's like a good soup mix. It's all together, and it all means one and the same thing. And when I begin to think about it, I'm thinking, well, yes, it really does, because the Lord's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven when Jesus comes again. So you tie all of that together, and you're like, wow, okay, that makes a little more sense to me. So hallowing the name of God and then calling upon God to say, we want your kingdom to be on, this, on, the, on the earth as it is in heaven. Now then, let's look at that and see really what is Jesus talking about. Because we know first and foremost that this, is, this prayer is given before the cross, much less before the second, or the, uh, the second coming of Christ that we're still waiting for. <coughs> but we also know Let's start, first of all, at the starting place, and that is, who is the sovereign king, period? Got an answer for me, huh? Who? Who is the sovereign king? All time of all evermores, Jesus Christ, God, and Christ as one. So we know who the king already is, because we just hallowed his name. And now we're saying, thy kingdom come, as far as looking at past, present, future, this all ties together just as it does to say, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as in heaven. It all ties together as one soup mix of what it really is. <laughs> in other words, first of all, this is the king who is talking. Even though he's talking to the father, this is the king. He's already king, although his kingdom is not just present, it is past and it is future. Jesus is already king regardless of whether anybody uh, recognizes him as being that or not on this earth. His reign is past, but it's also present and it's also future. So how can we tie all that to our understanding? The second advent of Christ will be yet to come, all right? And I hope you're like myself. I hope you're anxiously looking forward to that because to me, that's gonna be the greatest time this earth has ever known after we get through the reclamation of the earth. The earth is Jesus. It belongs to him. It doesn't belong to Satan, though Satan is right now a dominant factor on this earth. But the earth belongs to Jesus. And one day, Jesus is going to come back, and he's going to reclaim his earth. He's going to take it back. He's going to take it by force, but by the force of his mouth, the words of his mouth, Satan is going to be, uh, is going to be abducted and cast into the everlasting pit of fire. But when Christ returns this next time, the second coming as we talk about it, is when in that advent is when Jesus is going to judge the evil that is in the world and he's going to set up his eternal kingdom. So when we start to think about, well, how does this all come together? When, when we're looking at how Jesus phrased this, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we're thinking, okay, when Jesus returns, then the, his will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is that what Jesus is telling us to pray right now? Lord, hurry up and come back so your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven after you get back. But you know what? When I got to looking at that this afternoon, I said, oh, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on now. I see that a little differently to what I've seen it in the past. Think about it this way. You and I have a constant battle of wills, all right? What is the greatest battle in your life as it is in mine? Our commonality joins there with our greatest battle is that we're battling with sin nature, okay? Sin nature. When Jesus returns and then that forward as we, as we return to the will of God, then we're no longer going to have the sin nature. We're going to have the God nature, okay? So take that flip-flop and put it in your mind and understand. Right now, we have a fight on our hands. T 
to keep from giving in to the tendency, the nature to sin. In that day, all we'll have is the nature to be godly, the nature to love God, the nature to glorify God, the nature to raise God up and to serve God. That's all we'll have. We won't have the sin nature anymore. We'll have the God nature. And so I got to thinking, I said, wow, man, is this not a great prayer for us as Christians? As we think about praying it, we think about the depth of what Jesus is really saying. He's saying, Lord, I want to do your will. I want to. And so when I got to thinking a little deeper, Lyle, you think about it this way. He says, thy kingdom come. Well, when we study the Bible cover to cover, you'll find out that from Matthew forward throughout the whole New Testament, what is the kingdom of Christ? What is thy kingdom? Thy kingdom began when Jesus Christ was here on this earth before because it's, it is for the final kingdom when Jesus will rule for eternity and forevermore even after he comes again. And when all the penitentiaries will be gone and the asylums will be gone and the prisons will be gone and all of this other will be gone and the nature then will be to serve God and never even think about, uh, never even think about serving Satan or wanting to do Satan's will, righteousness will prevail in Jesus' kingdom. But when did Jesus' kingdom really begin? Because as I thought about it, past, present, and future. Past, boy, has it been tough. Has it been tough? Up until this day, the sin that has come upon us all, but in the kingdom of Christ, in the eternal kingdom of Christ, Jesus himself actually said the words. He said, righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit will prevail. That's when we'll reach that point in time where the sin nature is gone and the God nature takes over. I don't know about you, but it excites me to even think about that. But you know what? There's something else that keeps coming in. What about now? What today? What about now? What about in my life? Why is it that I'm saying to Jesus, thy kingdom come? The kingdom of God is coming. Surely it is coming. But the kingdom of God is already. It is already. It is already here. In that day, the kingdom, the Bible says that the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says the angels will be singing and he shall reign forever and ever. You know the song. The hallelujah to God. That he is, that he is, and he will reign forever and ever. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 8 verse 11, I tell you many will come from the east and the west and will sit down at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven. Yet the Bible begins with Jesus' time. And as Jesus left this earth, he talked to us, the kingdom, and he said, now you are the kingdom of God. Preach, I don't believe that yet, but let me ask you something now. What about what Jesus told us in the final book of the Bible, in the book of the Revelation? Just before Revelation comes to an end in Revelation chapter 20, verse 22, verse 20, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I'm going to ask you something. You take this seriously. Take it all the way to the bottom of your heart and think about it before you even answer to yourself. Are you, are you bold enough to pray that prayer? Are you bold enough to say, it is my heart's desire, Jesus, that your kingdom come even now? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The very first words of Jesus on this earth. I found this so interesting when I ran across it. The first words of Jesus to the new church, speaking to the disciples, speaking to those around who would listen, his first words of his ministry, as he began his ministry to develop the new church, it's found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. He had just read from the book of Isaiah. He was in the temple and he had read from Isaiah. And uh, uh, his words were simply this. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right, now think about that. What Jesus has just stated was the fact that today begins the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And again and again throughout his ministry, Jesus Christ referred 
Later on in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, Jesus said, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is in your midst, is in the midst of you. It's already here. It's here. It is the church. Oh, but you got, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, it don't look much. Like, listen, whose fault is that? Whose fault is it that the church don't look like the kingdom of God? Huh? Are you listening to me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whose fault is it? Is it God's fault? No. God designed the church to be the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. His children, his Jesus heirs, the ones he died for, gave his life for. That word kingdom, referring to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, that, that word, listen to this, it occurs 49 times in Matthew, 16 times in Mark, and 38 times in Luke. Jesus was trying to drive home the fact to the disciples in his day, his apostles, who were the beginning, the foundations of the, of the new church. And he was trying to drive home a message to us that it seems so hard to have gotten through our thick heads is, we are the kingdom of God. As Christians, that's us. We are. I know we must have that sin nature in it. Yeah, we do. We do. But it's our job to fight it with all we've got by the power of God and with the guidance and the strength of the Holy Spirit. The understanding, the wisdom given to us by him. Before Jesus went to the cross, here's what Jesus said. Now, listen, he's talking to me and you. He's calling us into the, into the, uh, into the fold, into the army of God. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 43, Jesus said, I must Preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well. I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit, but to saying, I must preach the gospel. I must preach the gospel. I must preach what you and I have been commissioned as the kingdom of heaven to preach to the world, to teach to the world, to show to the world. He said to others, other towns, other areas as well. He said, because that's why I was sent here. I was sent here for that purpose. So how do we then go about our own lives, thinking about our own selves and everything about ourselves, and putting ourselves number one, number one, and number one, rather than God, number one, rather than God being our most important thing? Jesus tried to get them to understand you are the beginning. You are the foundation builders of the kingdom of God on this earth. And how then we pray this prayer. Jesus said, pray it this way. I want you to pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's now, not when Jesus returns, not when he comes back, because it's going to happen then. Listen to me carefully, let me tell you, we don't have to pray for the will of God to be done when Jesus gets back here. Because when he gets back here, he done told us in Revelation, I'm going to rule with the rod of iron. You know what that means? That means it's going to be done. It's not going to be thought about. It's not going to be an option. You're going to live according to the ways and the, and the uh, auspices of God. So how did Jesus do this? How did, he, how did he preach that so that you and I could see it today in our lifetime? All right? How could we say, well, here we go. We've got to understand. Well, Jesus preached it that this is the way. This is the way that you help to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth by bringing men and women, boys and girls, into the kingdom. By preaching, by teaching, by living, by showing the kingdom of God in our own lives. The fact is that when we pray this prayer this way, and we're, we're, we're just literally, as Paul talks about, uh, the, the Christian ought to be like an Olympic player who's just stretched out as hard as he can to win the race. I mean, he's really giving it all he's got. If we are really that sincere about wanting the kingdom of heaven on this earth, then we've got to be striving to be the ones who leads the world to do the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. That's got strong, ain't it? Those who are in, those who are truly in God's kingdom are striving to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Mark 1.14 said, the kingdom of God is at hand. 
Repent and believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent. Repent. Be sincere. I see such a lackadaisical, apathetic attitude toward the kingdom of God on this earth. I see people who just take it so casually. I'm a Christian. Really? Are you a Christian? A Christian is a member of the kingdom of God. Not just a member of the church. Not just somebody can be a deacon and vote in the business meetings or so. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. That's what it is. It's not New Salem Baptist Church. It's New Salem kingdom of God. It's where God's kingdom meets. Being a Christian, being a member of the kingdom of God, doesn't mean that I can run my life always the way I want to. There's things that I've got to do to consider God first because king, thy kingdom come means that it starts with me. When I repent, I must repent. I must show this will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Am I sincere? Am I, do I really care? Do I really want the kingdom of God to be here? Because number one, it means I've got to repent and prove the kingdom of God by the will of God being done on this earth as it is in heaven through me, through us, through our little church here in reform. Yes, that's where it is. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, is at hand. In fact, he said it's in the midst of you. We're already here. We are the kingdom of heaven. And I pray too, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. But first I've got to commit. I've got to put the depths of my soul Jesus was so direct when he said, no man who puts his hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom. Is he talking about going to heaven? No, he's talking about the kingdom of God here on this earth, us. A man who is out here living, calling himself a Christian and living like hell is not a member of the kingdom. He may be a member of New Salem, but he's not a member of the kingdom of God. Is that clear? That's what Jesus was saying. If you're down here claiming to be a Christian, claiming to have been saved, but your yearnings, your desires are behind you to what you used to be, you're more interested in living the way you used to live than you are in being bringing the, the kingdom of God, the will of God to this earth, then you're not worthy to be a part of the kingdom which is the church, which is what Jesus died for. The kingdom of God is for those. Now get this. The kingdom of God is for those who have made a surrendered commitment to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. No looking back. No looking back. No long, no more longing for the way it used to be, but for it's what it can be. It can be so much better. It can be so much more wonderful. How? Because I can. I can win lost folks to Jesus Christ. And they can become a member of the kingdom of heaven too. And then they can live the will of God and bring the will of God on. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's up to us, folks. We are the church. We are the kingdom of heaven. We are God's heaven. Now, there's one other verse I thought I might better throw in here. Just so you'll understand. Why did Jesus say these words? You remember them? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And of course, you know that comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which we'll soon study. Why did Jesus tell us to seek the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven? That's because he knew. He knew the tendency of the world ways in us the nature that goes to reach for sin, and long for sin, and he knows the battle that we're having to fight. Listen, Jesus was here. The Bible told us he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He showed us how to do it. Oh, you say, preacher, it's so hard. Sure it is, but if it's easy, would it be worth it? Would it, huh? I mean, if it's so easy, everybody just be that. You wouldn't have to worry. We'd all be sweet little angels flying around. Come on, it's the truth. We are the kingdom of God. We are unique. Jesus said we are to be peculiar. You ever, you ever, you ever refer to anybody being peculiar? 
Huh? Who said David fooled him? <laughs> we ought to be peculiar, different, unique. We're not supposed to look like the rest of the world. What's the difference? We desire, we live for, we long for the kingdom of God on this earth so that his will is done. This old world is so filled with evil because people are evil. Now I'm going to tell you something else. That kind of thinking, that kind of, of Bible understanding absolutely does away with this old easy believism, do nothing armchair Christianity that so much of the world is full of right now. We need to understand what we mean when we say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It goes together. It is together. And I'm going to tell you this, nobody, this is tough saying, because it's, but it's true, it must be said, nobody is a part of the kingdom of God except those who have put an end to themselves, and turn to God. That means what the Bible says, died to self, alive in Christ. So when we pray those little words, <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done, it demands, it demands a depth of commitment from us. From us. Not just looking around judging everybody else in the church or in the community or in the world, whatever. It makes a difference. First in us, then in our society, then in our community, certainly in our family. It makes a difference. It produces in us that kind of commitment, that kind of sold out surrender, dead to me, alive to Christ. That kind of commitment guarantees I'm already in the kingdom of God because my heart's desire from the depth and all the way out is God's will to be done. And it starts with me. And I understand that. And I want it that way. I want it that way. No, it's not easy. And you and I look at this old world today and we look at all the things going on and we say, wow, you know, it's such a, it's so evil and there's so much bad stuff. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. But I'm not the one doing it. And I'm not going to be the one doing it. No matter what it takes. No matter what it takes. As the Bible talks about it throughout the New Testament, a hungering and a longing, a thirsting after righteousness, after the real deal, the real deal, kingdom of God. Not this play pretty Jingle, jingle kind of service. I'm talking about really serving God with a singleness of heart and a commitment to God that is just as committed as someone who has died and awoke at Jesus' feet. That kind of folks makes a difference in the world. It does. That kind of folks will make a difference in the world. Are we that kind of folks? You're praying for three things. When you pray... Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You are praying for the establishment of God's kingdom that starts here and now. The roots of which go all the way to heaven. The roots of which go all the way into eternity. We're praying for the day when all creation will cry out to him, dearest father, Abba, father, dearest, dearest God, come Lord Jesus. When we pray your kingdom come, it, do we mean it? Do we really mean it? Is, is it so much in our heart that we, that we already ourselves are conformed to God, not to the world, but to God, longing, longing for that world that has God as its king. Your kingdom come first in my life. I want your kingdom in my life, and I want to be in your kingdom even now, even while I use me. For your kingdom. Use me. Use me. Your kingdom come to my family. 
to my job, to my school, to my place of employment, my whatever I am, my living quarters, whatever. Thy kingdom come to me and to me and to everybody I know, everybody that's around me. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Any questions? It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants you to be in the kingdom. Amen. Anything else? Anybody else? All right, let's stand. No? Dismiss the word, please. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord.